Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has announced that Israel is set to deport all African migrants. Every single one of them. And build another giant border wall to keep millions more out of the country. But wait, I thought... Diversity was a strength. The plan was revealed following violent clashes in Tel Aviv between different groups of Eritrean asylum seekers. I know there. 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 The running battles were fought between supporters and opponents of the Eritrean regime, leaving hundreds injured, including many Israeli police officers. More than 150 people were injured, including 30 police officers. Israeli police fired tear gas, rubber bullets, and stun grenades. Live rounds were also fired in the air. Netanyahu responded swiftly. The massive illegal infiltration into Israel from Africa posed a real threat to Israel's future as a Jewish and democratic state. We stopped this threat by building the fence. There remains the problem of those who had already entered before the completion of the fence. These are tens of thousands of illegal infiltrators who entered Israel. Based BB. He previously attempted to, quote, relocate many refugees into Western nations over a period of five years. Yeah, thanks for that. But when that didn't work, Israel erected a giant fence along its border with Egypt. A measure that, according to Netanyahu, quote, thereby stopped more than a million infiltrators from Africa who would have destroyed our country. But wait, they told me it was cultural enrichment. <laughs> Now Netanyahu says Israel will put up another huge fence along the entire border with Jordan to ensure, quote, that there will be no infiltration from there either. We will protect our borders and we will protect our country. Interesting. Note how he's not just calling for the deportation of those who took part in the riots, but for, quote, the removal of all the other illegal infiltrators, which Israel treats as illegal economic migrants, not refugees. The development has prompted some to ask why vast numbers of African migrants making their way to Europe is treated it is an inevitable necessity. Despite the massive problems caused by the constant influx in terms of crime, violence, and social dislocation, Eritreans also recently staged similar riots in Germany, Norway, and Sweden. And why those who call for strict border controls in the West to protect the integrity of national identity are demonised as right-wing extremists. Yet when a relatively small number of migrants kick off in Israel, they're immediately marked for deportation, a consequence that's vital to protect the national identity of Israel, according to Netanyahu. And criticism of Netanyahu for announcing this seemingly draconian response is minimal at best. But when Europeans call for such measures, they're immediately denounced as dangerous, great replacement conspiracy theory, white supremacists. When BB does it, well, that's just reasonable border policy. Netanyahu wants to ultimately quote, Surround the entire state of Israel with a fence. Why can't we just be more like Israel? Remember the days before mountains of meaningless email? Remember the thrill of receiving a real letter in the real mail? Rediscover that nostalgic excitement with historic mail. A thoughtful gift for anyone who appreciates history and the lost art of letter writing. Well, what do we have here? It's nothing less than a letter from Franklin D. Roosevelt to good old Winston Churchill. Fascinating stuff if you're a World War II buff. The letter demonstrates the special relationship between these two iconic leaders. Check out this letter from Walt Disney to Richard Nixon. Historic mail is the perfect gift for history lovers. Learn about the fascinating inner lives of the world's greatest historical figures from the primary source itself. It's Walt Disney to President Nixon when he was vice president. And that's what the letter actually looked like. Yeah, that is so yeah, cool. Yeah, he was writing one to a TV show. He couldn't make it, but that's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, that's really, I really love cool. These. I love that. I yeah, love and he left a little stamp. That's cute. It's just interesting to see this history. Yeah, and how authentic it is. That's really cool. Every week a stamped envelope is delivered to your doorstep, containing a reproduction of a letter penned by a famous historical figure, supported by a document providing historical context and a typed version of the letter. Get 10 weekly letters for only $59.99. We'll get a whole 52 weeks worth of letters for an in-depth, personalised exploration through a specific period of history. Get letters from historical titans, including George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Nikola Tesla, and Thomas Edison. 
almost as if they came straight from their desk to yours. Personalise your gift with a special certificate featuring your name and the receiver's name on it. Just use the code PJW to get your 10% discount. Go to historicmail.com slash PJW to get your gifts now and help support this channel. Now back to the video. Despite their vociferous opposition to anyone in the West who demands tighter border control to protect national identity, one group that has nothing to say about Netanyahu's mass deportation plan is the ADL, which previously asserted that, quote, it is unrealistic and unacceptable to expect the state of Israel to voluntarily subvert its own sovereign existence and nationalist identity and become a vulnerable minority within what was once its own territory. Diversity for thee, but not for me. Calling for demographic stability and national identity to be protected in Europe is hate speech. Calling for demographic stability and national identity to be protected in Israel is a progressive virtue. Tucker Carlson repeatedly pointed out this glaring inconsistency when he was on Fox News. Go to the Anti-Defamation League's website sometime if you'd like a glimpse of what an unvarnished conversation about a country's national interest might look like. In a short essay posted to the site, the ADL explains why the state of Israel should not allow more Arabs to become citizens with voting rights. Quote, with historically high birth rates among the Palestinians and a possible influx of Palestinian refugees and their descendants now living around the world, the ADL explains, Jews would quickly become a minority within a binational state, thus likely ending any semblance of equal representation and protections. In this situation, the Jewish population would be increasingly politically and potentially physically vulnerable. In the words of the ADL, why would a government subvert its own sovereign existence? And for his sins, he was then subjected to a relentless deplatforming campaign by the ADL, which later celebrated Tucker being kicked off Fox News. Recall this is the same group that claims anti-Antifa images are hate speech. Ooh, but how the tables have turned. The hashtag ban the ADL has been trending on X, Twitter, for days. With Elon Musk threatening to run a poll in response to questions as to why top Twitter execs are still meeting with ADL lobbyists when the group openly organised an advertiser boycott in an attempt to destroy Twitter after Elon took over. Literally saying that Twitter was on a death watch because Elon dared to suggest it might restore free speech. ADL has tried very hard to strangle ex-Twitter, said Musk. Also noting how it was interesting that the ADL's Jonathan Greenblatt sounded like Musk himself on on the issue of free speech as recently as 2016. We at the ADL and me personally deeply agree. You can't outlaw bad ideas. You can't outlaw hate. You, you just can't. We think the best response to bad ideas or bad speech are better ideas and better speech. And the ADL hashtag posters are demanding to know why a lobby group for a foreign government gets to decide what Americans are allowed to say on social media. After the Israeli government in between threatening to mass deport African immigrants, decried the hashtag and threw its support behind the ADL. In a statement responding to the hashtag campaign, the ADL itself drew attention to its history of supporting diverse people of colour minority groups in America, vowing to continue to fight hate to protect marginalised minorities. Except for the Eritreans in Israel, because they don't count. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.